I did the research, and it turns out Americans did not, in fact, invent comedy. This week, let's talk about five comedy records from the BBC. I'm Jason Klom, and this is Comedy on Vinyl. If we had publicly funded media in the U.S. that wasn't in constant threat of obsolescence, uh, it might look a little bit more like the British Broadcasting Corporation. Now, one of the more magical things about it is that, uh, you know, it is publicly funded, but it is not uh, under any uh, any onus uh, to the state. It is not state-run media, as it were. Uh, therefore, uh, they can get away with a lot more in terms of free speech. There's, there's a lot of things uh, that you're going to see on the BBC that you would not see, of course, on American television. Um, uh, when you're growing up and, and you're a young person, you might be shocked to see a booby uh, on uh, public TV, which occasionally will make its way through here or uh, hear a dirty word. Um, I, I, I'm sure some of that shock is why people like myself, when you're 12 or 13, you're like, oh, 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 that's hilarious. And that's one of the reasons you end up liking Python, because they're, they're, they're dirty. They're naughty. They're very childish, let's be honest. Um, so this week, I wanted to talk to you about five records that the BBC released. Now, that's one of the other things about the BBC is they, uh, especially in the 70s and 80s, released a lot of records that were soundtracks to their shows. Um, and some they have a variety of formats, as a matter of fact. Some are compilations, some are uh, just collections of sketches, and then there's one uh, big exception, which is one of the things I'm most fascinated with, and actually caused, has caused a bit of mystery for me um, that maybe you can help solve. So the first one I want to talk about is this gentleman. Uh, this could be a gentle lady as well. I apologize. I don't mean to gender it. Uh, the laughing stock of the BBC. Now, I, I wanted to get the compilation out of the way first. And uh, now, hilariously, <clears throat> sorry, just very quickly, that is not a green sticker. That's an orange sticker. I don't know if you care, but uh, that's, that's just how fluorescents work on cameras. Anyway, um, so this is a collection of uh, sketches from Python from uh, around the horn, which I'm not familiar with. So uh, any of my English folks, you feel free to send me stuff that I should listen to. I mean, it's probably on here, uh, but uh, not the nine o'clock news, which we will get to Hancock's half hour, the goons, of course, uh, more of the goons and the two Ronnies. In fact, uh, I have a lot of the records uh, that some of these are, are taken from. Um, and this is filled with some of the, just some of the best also. Yes, minister. This is filled. So from uh, Mighty Python's Flying Circus, here's what's hilarious is they do not actually tell you too much about about, um, what's on here in terms of sketches, uh, but they do tell you roughly what you're going to listen to, and this this is a this is the kind of stuff that you can get on BBC Records. So this is a perfect way to start it to give you a rough idea of the kind of stuff that you're going to see. And I apologize for not looking at the camera. Uh, this is a new format that I'm doing, um, but uh, a new format where I don't have to look at the camera. Anyway, uh, laughing stock of the BBC, and it does have a ton of sketches. It's been a while since I've heard this record, um, but lots of very enjoyable English comedy. It's a good sampler to get an idea. And I'm at least, you know, if you're an American, there's going to be some Python to sort of to, to sort of push you into it. More orange. This is yellow, actually. Uh, more Python to push you in there. And then there's also um, Rowan Atkinson on not the nine o'clock news. If you need a little bit more stuff, Americans are familiar with to get you to get you into it. Um, it is a fun record. Uh, and then that brings us to our second record. No segues uh, this time, really. Um, they're normally terrible segues, to be honest. This is I'm Sorry, I'll Read That Again. Now, there's a lot going on in terms of uh, chroma keys. I apologize. Any bright-ass neonish colors are, are just going to do this weird thing, but it's kind of great. You see the Union Jack through it. So you'll see one familiar face. If you're American, there's one familiar face there, and that is right there. That's your John Cleese. Um, so John Cleese uh, is was part of this radio show, and it was... I mean, filled with brilliant sketches like, um, <clears throat> I think the first one I heard off this ever was Robin Hood. And if you listen to it, it is quite clearly, it's basically a goon sketch I mean, in terms of voices. Um, I, <clears throat> I just hit the camera. I just hit the microphone and can't cut that out. Uh, cause again, that's how we're doing it this week. Um, but uh, yeah, th this is this is a series of, of sketches that is very goonish. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'll read that again as of course, uh, the common parlance uh, for oh, oops I fucked up let me try that again and I like the idea that, that that's the title of their sketch show um, uh, 
uh, yeah, this is a fun sketch album with again one one person that that hand right there. Um, see, this is this is why it's going to take a while to get used to this. But uh, John Cleese might get you into it if you're American. Um, now, speaking of John Cleese, uh, there we go. There's a segue for you. This is this is the one that is the most interesting to me. They released a few of these, and there's actually a shop here in Los Angeles where you can still get these. Uh, well, you could uh, before things were crazy uh, get these new in package for the most part still sealed they have a lot of the 70s and 80s comedy records there i'll have to look and see if they're still in existence and promote them on a, on a later uh episode i did interview um uh, the proprietor of the shop on a previous episode to talk about his uh stepfather uh brian kluwer um uh, that's a record that will come up in another british episode but this um i mean there you are faulty towers now this is not what it might seem this is not a selection uh from the show this is not a collection of very funny bits. This is, uh, on the side that I'm looking at, side one, Faulty, Out, Faulty Towers, Mrs. Richards. Now, what does that mean? That's an episode entitled Mrs. Richards, which if you're familiar with the show, you know it's a good episode. Um, it's the entire episode on one side. And then there's another episode on the other side. Um, so on this record, there are just two episodes of a TV show. This is a format that I happen to love. It is simple. Um, and it was uh, definitely, this is, again, people say it's a snapshot of its time. This is a snapshot of, of a necessity uh, at this particular time. You, you didn't have tape players, tape recorders. You weren't going to be recording a tape. So there you are. You had to get your television show uh, on record, and you got it this way. So there's no way to record it. This is how you would have it. This is how you maybe pass it around. And, of course, Faulty Towers was a classic. Um, and uh, we do have another one uh, like that. Uh, which is, I'm going to switch these around, this is Till Death Us Do Part. Now, if you're American, you might not be as familiar with this. Uh, you might, however, be familiar with Una Stubbs right there, uh, but you know her best uh, best from Sherlock. Sherlock. Sherlock is what I just said? From Sherlock um, as Mrs. Hudson. So, uh, but back then, she, she's, a, she's a young mod lady, and, and, and there's, there's the mom, there's the dad. They're angry at her and her young her young beau. Um, it's it's old generation versus the young generation, and it's roughly 10 to 15 years before All in the Family, which is based off of this show. This is, if I'm not mistaken, and watch watch me be wrong, uh, but uh, yeah, there we go. Here we are. You know what? I I am wrong. I was entirely wrong. Uh, this this is cut together. Uh, this this is cut into tracks. So actually, you know what? That one's cut into tracks. This one is not. See, it's been a while since I've heard this. So there's an entire episode on one side and uh, selections on the other. Uh, what a, a fun little bit here is. There's a piece of the shooting script here on the back. That's that's what the the back of this is, or with with little seemingly actual handwritten notes. Um, but till death, I listen to this and it's delightful. Look at that. That's look at look at Mrs. Hudson right down there. Uh, this is. It, it's a fun show. It's goofy. It's of its time, you know, which is to say. It's old. It probably doesn't hold up as well. Um, All in the Family doesn't as much, but um, it is what All in the Family is based off of. Um, and, you know, it, it was an attempt to, at the very least, stay current, stay up to date, uh, you know, appeal to the older generation and the younger generation at the same time. Speaking of staying up to date, not the nine o'clock news. Now, uh, this one I can't remember if we've talked about on the podcast or not. We have talked about a not the nine o'clock news uh, album before. Uh, but I, it was not this one for sure um, uh, on the episode I'm thinking of. I don't know if we've ever talked about this, but <clears throat> this is the one, again, on the back of that record where you'll get your Rowan Atkinson, you'll get your Pamela Stevenson, and a bunch of other people who uh, you are probably familiar with if you're familiar with English con comedy. And I'm not, for my English watchers, if there is, is anybody in the UK watching this, uh, my British folks, um, I'm not trying to gloss over those people. Um, I just literally know less about them, and uh, it's harder to talk to that, and I don't want to pretend like I know more about those folks. Um, but uh, not the 9 o'clock news. There's, there is definitely some stuff that is um, pushing boundaries, but for the most part, if I recall correctly, uh, I actually enjoy most of the times they push the boundaries. I even now, I find the, the older I get, uh, some of that stuff appeals a little bit less. Oh, that's right. Okay, so one of my favorite... It's one of my favorite sketches of their entire series. Is uh, it's called Life of Python, which did end up being the name of something later on, and it is um, it is <laughs> a parody of the the actual moment where Python had to justify the existence 
of Life of Brian uh, and, you know, were snobbed off of television uh, by, uh, by um, a religious figure. And this is the opposite, but uh, there are people complaining about Python or not complaining about Python. One person wants them taken off because, uh, or, sorry, I am totally mangling it. Long story short, Python is a religion in the sketch. That's the gag. I, I'm just going to destroy it by, by talk, again. Uh, but that that's the gag. Python's a religion in it. And uh, it is also filled with quotes uh, to the point where you know they're obviously fans, but they are also aware that um, the other fans can be a bit nutty. Um, so there we are. Um, uh, it, it, that's also a fun record. These are these are five uh, albums I can recommend. I've got some other ones I'd like to talk about, some of which are not BBC, but I have a ton of English records um, that uh, would be fun to cover down the line. I'd like to know what English records you think I should listen to. I mean, I, I've, I've been exposed to, I didn't know who George Formby was before this podcast, because uh, before my podcast, that is, um, because I had never, I had no exposure to him. So, um, my guests sometimes expose me to stuff, but through YouTube, you can do that. And, uh, if you want to subscribe, if you like what you're seeing so far, please subscribe, hit the bell, uh, to get notifications. Um, you can follow comedy on vinyl on Twitter at comedy on vinyl. You can uh, join us on Facebook at, uh, slash comedy on vinyl, comedy on vinyl.com. And you can find me J Klom, J K L A M M on Twitter, Jason Klom on Instagram, we're also comedy on vinyl on Instagram. And if you go to patreon.com slash stolen dress, that is where you can find my Patreon. And there are varying different levels that you can join that might even change around to make it a little bit simpler soon. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate you checking this out. And as always, have a good thing. Hey, it's my turn. Ah! <laughs>